<laughs> I'm going to move this a little so closer. So welcome. Today is the 4th of the 4th, 2015, wherever you are in the world. Good evening, afternoon, or good morning. This is Hukalo TV, and we are here gathered today for our regular Saturday webinar. I'm, my name's Rui. I'm here with my partner, Kim. And I just want to give a quick introduction to uh, the people that have joined us in the Hangout today. Today we have Stephen Helms with us. We have Sheer. We also have Sarah and Nitrous Pegasus. We have Caitlin, Guru Dan, uh, Brian with the hat, and Audrey. So a big welcome on your side. I know Jim also has some uh, visitors and guests at his place, so I would like him to do yes. an introduction. That's okay. There's five people here today. I have Barbara to my left, your right. I have Will over here. I have Christina over here. You, no one's ever seen you, Christina. Why don't you come over? And uh, Christina's new. Just uh, you put your face in there. Hi. Christina. And Hi, then there's Francine. Francine is here, and Helga is here, and Francine and Hel uh, 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 Helga and Christina are mother-daughter. So mm -hmm. we have some great energy here today. It's beautiful, and I welcome everybody. Um, we had a little bit of technical difficulty, but thank God Will is here. So. <laughs> yeah, apologies for the late start, people, but um, welcome to everybody that's just about tuning in on YouTube. This should be going out live now, the link's up on there. Um, we've got plenty to go through today. We've got a few introductions and a few uh, things to mention just before I hand over to Jim. Um, I just want to wish everyone a happy Ishtar. That's the way I personally say it. This is a special weekend. There's lots of energy, which Jim is going to explain about in a second. But first, I just want to mention about the 15th of May, which is the special event with Rob Gauthier that's coming to the channel on our regular webinar. And also on the 20th of June, is that correct? 20th? I believe it's the 20th of June. Yes. Yep, yep, that's the yep. event, which is the... Eight Encounters, is that correct? Encounters of the Eighth Kind. Encounters of the Eighth um, exactly. Which is actually channeling, yes. Uh, channeling is the, the encounter of the Eighth Kind from uh, extraterrestrials, aliens, off-worlders, whatever you want to call them. So we're really looking okay. forward to all these uh, amazing events. And also we've got some more that we're thinking about, planning, coming up with, so watch this space and you'll find out more. Also, um, to new people tuning in, if you want to visit the colonies and find out more information, if you check out humancolony.org, you can find out all the information there. Slava has done an amazing job on our new splash screen. Uh, the website is looking tip-top, the best it's ever looked, and it's so much more usable now, it's so much more informative, so please check out the website, and Slava, I know you want to join us soon, and I've been hard to get in contact, but please let me know when you want to come and you've got a VIP place waiting for you. So big respect to Slava, shouts out to Russia, and um, I'll hand it over to Jim, who has a short message for us. Yes. Oh, thank you, Slava, so much. Uh, you do amazing work. You're underappreciated as far as I can say. <laughs> I mean, I love you dearly, and um, I'm so glad that they gave you hybrid children that you adore and love. And um, and your mother as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep up the wonderful work. And if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. So much love to you. And much love to everybody who is joining us today. I'm in a super frame of mind today because of the energies that are coming in. Um, of course, you know about the blood moon and the eclipse and everything. If you're in a positive frame of mind going into this very energetic, very powerful time, very rare time. Um, there are many things happening right now, and keep your spirits high because that will only enhance your experience of this energy that is coming in, which is very rare and positive. Now, understand, though, that there are many rituals going on around the world that are not all positive, but you can be enhanced positively by this. 
if you stay in a positive frame and say those positive words. If you, if you do not feel positive right now, start talking positive. Start filling your rooms with positive. Start uh, knowing that the positive is coming to you because the positive will be enhanced by this great energy as well as whatever is coming to you, whatever beginnings and journeys that are coming to you will also be enhanced. You will be getting a more fourth dimensional energy through this. It's and and I'm sure Alma Talk has much to say about this, Kim. But um, it is true that everything will be enhanced right now. Whatever feelings that you are experiencing, whatever goals that you are trying to reach, whatever thoughts that are going through your mind, keep them as positive and as um, uplifting as possible so that you can enjoy the benefits of this energy. I am enjoying the benefits already. I don't it doesn't even matter. I'm on cloud nine. So <clears throat> I feel great. And the there's so many people out there that were feeling low but have connected to a positive side and are now moving through this with a great positive energy and I'm just thinking uh, the heavens, the stars, and the spirits, and God, and all things holy, that uh, this is happening. So, uh, bless you all, because I just feel that a, a great energy today. So, yeah, look at the smiles on your faces. I see some people have great smiles on their faces. It's a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful time, and you can make it into an even better time. So, Enjoy this beautiful experience of energy that is coming to you from um, a very rare place. So, much love to you all. And um, let I I have a feeling that I just want to say a little small prayer for you at the beginning here, so that uh, we can just start off even in a greater sense of spirituality. That. Uh, I know some people just call it spirit or the universe or whatever, but it it does have power. It the power of uh, all things, really. So the power of you, whatever your imagination can create that is wonderful and beautiful and positive to help others. It it has a wonderful creative energy to it, and you are all creators, all of you. You are all creators, so don't forget that. Don't forget, you can create. It's not like you're stuck. It's not like you're stuck. You may feel stuck, but get that out of your head. Move that away. Move it out. Move it out. Keep, push it away because you are creators and you are not stuck. You are moving forward whether you like it or not. You're either moving forward or you're moving backwards, and you're, none of you are moving backwards. Let me tell you that. So you're moving forward really slowly or quickly. That's up to you. You shed the negative. You shed those doubts about who you are because you're perfect. You're beautiful. And you are loved. Feel it. Feel that love that is coming through right now. Because the love of the universe is with us in a greater way now. This this uh, event is like a huge amplifier for love, a huge amplifier for energy, a huge amplifier for the things of creativity. So don't forget that. Enjoy it. Soak it in. Breathe it in. Do your meditations into it and say, what do you have for me? Because it is just so incredible. Um, and let me say a little prayer first while we're right here. I'm sorry Sabrina couldn't join us today. She's usually our Arcturian prayer lady. But I'm going to just say a real short prayer right now. I just want to thank the universe, the spirits, all those who help us with all things. All those who bring us the positive and wonderful energy that we enjoy and feel and help us to create our destinies, lives, and 
livelihoods. Just let this energy be a part of you. Let it uplift you. Let it be a part of who you are in your daily lives because it's not going away. Oh, I'm sure that there will be days where you don't feel it that great, but if you start speaking positive things into the air, it's going to return because why? Positive words are powerful, powerful, powerful. I just want you to feel the love that I feel for you and everybody in this room. I am on top of the world today and I feel this energy so strongly and I, I just want to give everyone a blessing. Valalashanti Kapashanda Dararai. And that was from a Pleiadian who said, All is blessed on this day, and all that listen to the blessings. That's it. And so it is. And That's so beautiful. it is. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Is there anybody you, that you, in particular, wanted me to bring in today? I've had several Maybe requests. Maybe someone about um, Easter, Jim. I know. I know we had Valentine's Day last time, and someone came and talked about it. And oh, yeah. I know Easter is actually is tied with Jesus, but I believe there's much more to it. Um, I, in fact, use the terminology Ishtar uh, being the Easter period. I'm not sure if there's any more depth to the Easter phenomenon or there, the spiritually. Yes, there's many things, many things you don't know about Easter. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And Pastor, yesterday, actually. <laughs> hey. Yes. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Yes. Yesterday we started the celebration of uh, Passover, so yes. uh, maybe Moses can uh, shed some light about just everything that happened in his time. There's a lot of information over there, and we never channeled him. No, we have not channeled Moses yet. Hmm. Definitely to Kerr because I have something to show her so I can make her happy, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to request uh, Metro Lamas. <laughs> okay. He's been here a few times, or at least twice that I know of. Yeah, yeah. also Danny, who does the transcripts, got some questions for Takur. So anyone from Gurk Fitnir would be um, appropriate, but. Alrighty. Now remember, you have to turn off your questions, and if they go forever, no one else will come in. Um, so you'll have to remember, uh, keep it, keep an eye on the time and your energies, so not to uh, just have one person stay the whole time, like sometimes we have. Because um, I know that there's a lot out there coming in. There's a lot of requests, and. Um, you know what I'm saying. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. It 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 would be nice. Me and uh, Hayam would like to have Takur and Akesh. We love them. Okay. And think of this day a positive day. Bring a lot of positive vibration is into this, and it would be amazing. Yes. And I had a request for Elohim. I had a request for Nikolai Tesla. I had a request for, oh, several uh, different ones on the internet. So it's there's many of uh, many requests out there. Interesting enough, Jim, Nikolai Tesla has actually been appearing in person to a certain people. He's actually oh, really? been appearing physically. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting yeah. because he's sharing um, his technology. Because we say he thinks we're ready for it now, so that's yes, very he was. It's very advanced individual. Yeah. Um. Okay. Do you think he's coming today? No, I got a yes on that. We're ready for his technology. Oh yes, we are. But you'd be surprised how advanced his technology is. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, wow. So um. Alrighty then, if that's it, I'm going to... 
Okay. I'm going to say goodbye for now, and we'll see who comes. Um, be very positive in your thoughts so that we can get to the right place. All right. So Shalom. I am Moses. Moses. Welcome. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and being. Are you comfortable? I do not know quite where I am, but I can speak your language. You are Without here with a group called Hukula. We have requested your presence today to maybe share some light upon a time we call Easter and also a time that's called Passover. <laughs> these things were ahead of my time. However, I can tell you about some of these things because looking back, it is recorded. Not all properly, but in a positive way. There has been changes and much delusion. However, there are some parts that are very true. Let me start from the older part, from where I come from. The energies from where I am and where I was were very strong. There was an energy with me that I could not understand. I knew it as God. I knew it as a greatness far beyond what I was. And it was not as destructive as you may read in the Bible. It was very creative, in fact. Yes, parting of the Red Sea, it parted before us as we walked and closed up as we got through. That was a very wonderful and positive thing to escape from the armies that were chasing us. But it did not destroy as many as you think. The first few that tried to go through it closed up on, yes. But many were able to get back out of the water. They were far enough behind us that it did not kill them. At least not all. There were a few fatalities. But I do not believe that the energy wanted this ha to happen that way. It's just the way it happened. Moses, may I have other... a question on this? Yes. The energy that was involved in parting these waters, where did this energy originate from? The universe. It was from the creative part of the universe. And at that time, in 
creativity and expansion of the universe. There was a particular creative entity that was very much watching over the earth to make sure that it would continue. And it was that it was said to be that we needed to survive for the universe and this timeline to survive. And so it helped our timeline survive by doing the actions that it did. And that is why all miracles happen, is to keep this timeline alive, to keep those people that are to be servants and leaders and great people in light and to help the universe because the universe needs this planet more than you even know. And that is why. Hello, Moses. Hello. This is Shir from Israel. Hi. <laughs> um, I want to ask you a bit um, about um, things that happen in your timeline, uh, yes. according to the Bible. Yes. Um, first of all, it was said that uh, you did not uh, got the opportunity to enter Israel. No, I did not. Was it because you, according to the Bible, uh, brought water out of the the rock and didn't uh, praise the Elohim or something like that? I did kick the rock and water did spring forth, and, but that was not the miracle that was supposed to happen at that time. It, the people were supposed to see it differently. You see, that wasn't a good example to them. Mm -hmm. Yes, the water was to come forth, but I was not to kick the rock. I was to pray over the rock and strike it with my scepter, but I did not, or my cane, or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But I was not supposed to kick the rock. That was an act of anger, because the people were acting very unruly and very unthankful for all the things that had been given to them during this time in the desert. Yes. So I was, I was not in a very good frame at that time. But that's not why I didn't enter Israel. Okay. I did not enter it because it would have changed the timeline. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know that you also went to the mountain of Sinai and brought, uh, after 40 days, the Ten Commandments and also broke them according to the Bible. Can you maybe elaborate on that? Yes, I can. I did get a message from the Spirit on the mountain, and they were on the tablets, but it was not rules and regulations as was reported. It was mm -hmm. guidelines in some ways, and it was enlightenment for the people. But when I brought the tablets down, they were not ready for this. And therefore, the tablets were destroyed. They told me to throw them down. So I mm -hmm. threw them down, and they were destroyed. However, I think it is written that I went back and received them again. And they went yes. into the Ark of the Covenant. At least the pieces of it did, anyway. And it became whole again. There was the message still there. However... It was too far advanced for the people at that time. Yes, I can see. And it was um, not rules and regulations about God. That is what man guessed that I brought down. Hmm. Okay. But they had to have a control over the people. So they wrote rules and regulations on the stones, out of the stones, and that is not what was intended at all. Yes, that's what usually happens with the Bible. <laughs> when in doubt, they create their own intention Statue. of good. It was a good intention for them to write laws because they saw that the people would have a way. But there is no laws in yes. the sense that the spirit is free. But it does not know how to express it to humanity in the closed third dimension. Third dimension yeah. is so closed in many ways. And therefore the freedom of the spirit is hard to express 
when density is so strong. And what about the ten strikes in Egypt, the darkness, the killing of the false burn? Was that also uh, something that wasn't accurate? There was some darkness in that time, but it did not come from God. It came from the leader that was possessed by darkness. He brought ah, it the Pharaoh. out his own darkness. We did not bring darkness to him. He brought his own darkness to himself because he knew the difference between light and darkness. And he called on the darkness, and the darkness smote him because it, that's what the darkness likes to do. Mm -hmm. And so we were blamed for that, but we had nothing to do with it. I see. And what about the burning bush, the famous uh, part uh, when you... <laughs> yes. There were bushes that burned all the time with spirits. Yeah. Believe me, there was a time when the bushes burned with spiritual enlightenment, where the ground was enlightenment, there was glow on the earth. When the, when the people were in spiritual attunement, there was much brightness and energy glowing in fire. And what discouraged me sometimes was these miracles would appear before them, and then they would forget them so quickly. Mm -hmm. And I was not about to forget them. Yes, according to the Bible, you went after um, some sort of a deer, I forgot the name of it, and you went to the mountains and you saw the burning bush and heard God, or we call them the Elohim, and the Elohim he said... In the Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they are in the Bible. Um, the Israelis seem. Um, uh, how do you say it? They think that the Elohim are God. That's how the yeah. Israelis and the Hebrews this time see them. Yes. They were just giving me a message of peace and love, and not to be discouraged about what was to happen with my people. So that is how I was able to continue. Oh, there so were times when I wanted to walk away from my people sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't. Was it true that you were, um, um, that your mother uh, put you in, I um, forgot that name, um, she put you in the water and yeah. you just uh, and got to the by the princess? princess? Yes, that is there is some truth ah. to that, yes. So you were raised as one of the Pharaoh's sons. There is some truth to that as well, but I was also did not believe as they believed. There was much shadow energy there because they were cruel to their people. Hmm. And I could not endure that. And when I saw the cruelness first hand, and it was so great. I had to take a stand mm. against it. And was it true that you met your uh, two brother, Aaron, and uh, well, forgot I was name. not a good speaker. In fact, I did not hardly speak at all. And when Aaron, my brother, became my friend, my good friend, he spoke mm -hmm. for me many times. And he did so because even though I was the one getting the messages, he had the gift to be able to speak. But now that I'm in spirit, I have no problem with that. Yes. But I have no problem because there's no fear. I was mm -hmm. afraid to speak in front of large crowds, as many people are. And even with the spirit, I, was, I did have human fears. But I yes. got the message, and I knew that I had to give it Moses. some way, one way or another. So I had my brother speak for me. Moses, um, our group is um, highly involved with what we call extraterrestrials or beings from yeah. off of this world. Were you yourself involved 
or in communication with any of these beings when you were here as Moses on earth? Yes, I did have some visitations, but I'm not sure. I did not see them as extraterrestrials at the time. They came, they came to me as wise men, as you would call them. They came uh -huh. to me as people of interest and giving advice. And they saw where I was heading, and they knew the timeline was in difficulty and that some incredible changes needed to happen for the timeline to continue because it was turning very unsafe for people to even live. Going back so to therefore, you, therefore it, it became necessary for one person to lead and to be to create an energy that miracles could come from. Mm -hmm. And they gave me that energy and it was from the, a greater source and I believed it and that is why I was able to use it. See there's some speculation into the encounter which involves the burning bush as a bright yeah. light and some people speculate this possibly was what we call a UFO or a ship that comes from the skies. Was, that is, is there any truth to this? No, the burning bush was not a UFO, but on the mount, when they saw the lights from, from the heavens, yes. that was definitely, I realize, a UFO. Yes, because people but I did not see it. be able to describe what they I, saw, so they would s describe it as this, yes. I saw the light from it, and I heard the voices from it, but I did not actually see it. But it was definitely there. Moses, I believe that right now, I believe it was in fourth dimension because the light from it was very bright and the voices were very strong, but I could not actually see it because I did not have enough fourth dimensional energy in, enlightened in me. So I could see the light and hear the voices. Hello, so Moses. Did you, one moment, please. Did you have a question? know that we should know the Bible is mostly written um, by the dark, by the Anunnaki, by the lizards in order to control humans. Can you hear her? Yes, um, and not very well. Can you hear her? Come here to talk. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I have a lot of questions. First of all, we know that much of the Bible was not written by source was by written by the Anunnaki or those that are here to control the human and many of these miracles were actually by these forces so were you aware of the difference for example the Ten Commandments were given supposedly by source but it appears that maybe it was not it was not it was a great gift but it was not Ten Commandments it was words of light and wisdom it was not rules and regulations right. but, but it was not given by who you think it was not given that particular message was a good message and that is why it was destroyed by the Anunnaki I believe. Oh, okay. Okay. because the tablets were destroyed they were I was caused to throw them down but I was given them back were you aware when it was coming from a good place or from... It was. Were you aware? Yes, I was. I felt the energy of goodness. I did not feel the negativity when I was given these tablets. But afterwards, there was much... You are correct in saying that much of the Bible was tampered with and brought into a negative thought process. Them saying that... God created all the negative things that happened to the Pharaoh was wrong. He created those things on himself. His energy was so negative and so strong that he could not possibly control the goodness in himself. And he, instead of smoting us, he smote himself, although we all felt it. But we were protected. So we did not feel it in the same way that he did. Sure, there was 
rodents and there was blood and there was death and there was different things that locusts and darkness many many things but we were able to survive it without dying our people did not die his people did Moses, and Moses. yes yeah uh, go, go by yeah, yeah, this this is a question. This is Brian. I'll be back. Yes, Brian. Yes, my question was, at that time in your era, what was your connection with the Egyptians? How did you view them? How did you fit into their culture? How, what did you take away from that? Well, you know I started as an adopted son to the princess. Or the yes, princess. yes. And I lost favor because I killed a one of the guards who was being cruel to a Jewish person. And therefore, I could not live with them any longer, and I fled. And then, I became the leader because of my experiences with these two wise men who gave me much knowledge. And people started to listen when I spoke just to each person individually and they knew that the wisdom within me was far beyond what they could understand and eventually I started a following a following around me that I did not expect but then I knew that it was to be and this was to be and it was it is a very long story and very dragged out However, the outcome is very obvious. The timeline continued. And uh, just Moses. to expand, just to expand on that real quick, um, what what beings of extraterrestrials were you aware of at the time that you either walked with or talked to? Was it the Ayel or others? I do not know. Well, I do know now, but I did not know at the time who I was speaking to. I thought I was speaking to wise men. They came as wise men to me and not as aliens because I would not have listened to them. So they came in disguise. But there was a Yigil and a Pleiadian. Interesting. Well, thank you very much. And what is your question? What were the repercussions of, what are the repercussions of taking another life? She asked, what are the repercussions of taking another life and I say this there are some repercussions in your own personal density your guilt systems your your uh, your existence on the planet and in your next life because you will do will have to pay penance for that but not in the way that you think not hell and brimstone and fire but you will pay with some things, and I cannot explain that to you at this time. We've come to know that as karmic debt. So if you have done yeah. something like that in one lifetime, you will have to make up for it in the next. Exactly. And you will put that in your contract because it's necessary. Um, Moses, it's you again. Yes. Um, I want to know if me or my brother Nivi were related to you. You're, you are in my bloodline to a certain point, yes. And then your bloodline strays. But then you've come, you came back to it at another point. Right now you are still within it. Yes. And my brother Nivi... Of course. <laughs> um, this is the time for me to leave now. The question can is... I have, you, yes, you may have another question. Just one thing. Um, in one session, uh, my brother was told that he was your brother, actually, in the old timeline, Aaron. It, she was told what? I'm not sure. My brother was told that yes. he was Aaron, Aaron, in your timeline, yes. that he was your brother. Yes, that is true. 
Is there something you want me to tell him? Thank you. <laughs> sure do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moses, there are many uh, things that I would like to tell him. There are many things that I would like to tell my brother Aaron. And I know that he is a in spirit he is a spirit guide right now. But I will tell him thank you for now and we will have a conversation when he is not a spirit guide any longer. Okay. Interesting. Thank you for the questions, Chair. Moses, before you leave, do you have any messages, anything you would like to impart to us? Yes. Everything that happens that you call a miracle is to help the timeline proceed. Everything that you call extraordinary is to help this timeline proceed. And let me tell you why. It is, going, it is a focal point of the universe. And I won't say any more about that. Because there are several species depending on the survival of this planet for their own survival. And they are not really helping you survive but they depend on your survival. So they are sending prayers and energy, but they are not interacting because that is not how it works. But God, the source, the creator, those things of great energy, those things of understanding where we are in spirit, fourth dimension, third dimension, fifth dimension, and everything that you want to call or name, which has really no name, is being looked at. Because your prayers and fourth dimension, no energy is strong. I cannot explain it any better. Thank you so much for coming and giving us those messages today and answering our questions. You're Shalom, welcome. brother, and um, we look forward to maybe a future interaction once again. Wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You are much welcome. Friend. Shalom. Thank you for coming. Shalom. Test. <laughs> it's my time to return to you. So what would you what would you have with me today? This is Nikolai. Oh, greetings, Nikolai. Very oh, big welcome. Thank you very much. It's I would shake you by the hand, but I know you don't like touching. Yes, it's it's very much not my thing. Well, I hope you feel comfortable here with us today. I don't mind it anymore, really. Hmm. I've learned much in spirit, but in the, in the flesh, I'd rather send you a lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice yes. to hear you have a sense of humor. Yes, unlike Thomas Edison, I had a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. And some of the things you, you, you've done and the pictures we've seen, it, it blows our brains away a hundred years later. And, I mean, were you before your time? Why, wh why did you come into this world when you did? And have that knowledge and have that understanding of being able to recreate machines in your head. It was a gift. It was a gift from you. I heard Moses speak about the wise men. <laughs> I had similar experience, but I knew that they were alien because they were too strange to be human. 
So, but I listened to them very carefully. And I was still in Austria at the time. So, when I came to the United States, I, I already had learned English. They had already given my IQ a nice little bump. The things that were appearing in my brain, I didn't even have to write down. I could do things right away. I could invent things right from my head without change. I didn't have to modify. I did not have to do anything. I knew it was a gift because I could immediately see what it was. I could immediately see what it looked like. I could immediately know what it was going to do. And I could immediately manipulate all the things around me to help me get it done. So I knew these two gentlemen that visited me. I know them now as aliens. I knew that they were aliens when I met them. But it was a similar situation with Moses, and that's why I came. I heard that story, and I had a similar experience. But nobody knows of that, except for now. So, but anyway, they gave me photographic memory. I could memorize entire books and recite them back to people. They gave me photographic thought processes. It was amazing. But it, it made me a little... Um, a little conceited, I'm afraid. But with great power comes that sort of thing. But when I was not a fan of Thomas Edison, as you know, because we were rivals. He tried to speak against me all the time. And then they had the audacity to offer me an, a Thomas Edison award. And I was just livid actually but he was actually a very a very uninsightful person other than what what he did create the phonograph the things that he had his little narrow margin of of insight and creativity from that one little point but he was actually a fool so i'm oh i shouldn't say that you're welcome to say that he, he was actually a fool and i didn't like him at all and he was ignorant and very ponderous. I mean, he was he just threw around words as if they were, he invented them. So I was not a fan. Were controlled by the cabal and you were then taken out by the cabal? Yes. Mm. Lovely, isn't it? Lovely. But it's all right. It is way, it, it is not, it was, I was getting to a place where the, the inventions were too far ahead of mankind and too and they would have known that alien forces were at work there because I was also toying with interdimensional items uh, wormholes uh, I had already foreseen how to create a wormhole to take me from one part of the nation to another not that I could go from one part of the universe to another, but I've al I already could see how to create a, a way to get from one place to another without, uh, without actually traveling. So you're coming into body now to help since now you're coming back into being involved? They're letting me come back. You're not back yet. Th this is very yeah, special to me. Uh, very special to me because uh, there are certain people I can work with to to give some ideas to. I am not permitted to actually show them the whole thing, but I can. I see what they're doing, and their work is moving in the direction that I am understand. I was understanding of, and so I can say no, no. Don't do that. Would you like to give any clues to those individuals who might be watching now? Yes. I would like to say that very basic things are very important. Remember, I am the creator, actually the creator of the quark. You know what that is? 
That's the electron particles that bounce off in different directions, etc., like this. But uh, it's a, that's a very, very simple explanation of what they are. But I am, the quarks are very important. And the reason why they are is because they contain an altered energy. Quarks contain altered energy, and there's a clue for you, because they are not moving with the flow of energy, and so therefore they contain altered energy and may contain other things other than energy that they carry along with them. So therefore, there's a clue. Hello now. there, my name is Brian. Hello, Brian. Yes, um, I wanted to what speak on... Your face? What, what's that? I just said, what, what is the, your wish? There's the Australian coming in. Yeah, Australian. <laughs> nah, it's a, it's a glorious time to be alive. I, I wanted to share. Yes, I wanted to throw that out to, uh, to you. Were, so you were working on the teleportation. Yes. Interesting. It comes from, comes from the coil. Do you remember the coil that I invented? Yes, yes, the wrapping, yes. And you have to wrap it a certain way to work with the electromagnetics of the planet also, don't you? Well, I discovered that I could get the vibration of the Earth. Yes, it I knew works the vibration natural, of yes. the Earth. I knew the vibration of the Moon. I knew certain vibrational things, which is a key to transportation yes. to other places. So the coil was reinvented many times. And hey, finally, Ryan. it was it was finally invented. I started the final invention just before I'd, the final part that I was doing would have caused dimensional openings, right, and right. which would have also been able to. Uh, the next step would have been an accelerator and an amplifier and things of this nature that would open it into a distance, a, a dimensional distance, not just another dimension which you could stick your hand into, which was created and not really part of any other dimension, but a created dimension. But you could, you could extend it so that you could move into it like walking into a room, if you will, and Were walk you? all yeah. the way to somewhere else. But so, yet I also yeah. discovered you can ex your movement was accelerated within this dimension. So, so the body for itself. Me to walk five steps, yes. For me to walk five steps would be to walk across the nation. So were you then, so, as you're walking through the field, this, this haze, this field, were you speeding, was the vibration of the body speeding up also, the, the molecules in the body? Of course, you have to know the vibration of everything. And yes, yes. You had to control vibration, and my vibration was controlled by the dimension. When I walked into the dimension, my vibration changed, of course. Yes. Because I was not in the same element, I was not in the same density. Although it was a third dimensional den uh, dimension, the vibration of it was different because it was created in a different vibration. Ah, Do you understand? That's the key. Yes, yes, I understand now. Brian. And so therefore, I was able to move interdimensionally, but you see, that was destroyed. That, that particular item was destroyed. When I passed, the government took every one of the inventions and destroyed some of them. I understand. Who is there speaking? Yes, Audrey. Oh, Brian, um, I think the similar concept idea was in a movie called The Time Machine. Ah, time movement. It, it was actually a movement in time because your vibration is dis different and you can move in density differently. Yes, so five steps could be thousands of miles. So some people would look at that as being a time machine because you've moved from this time to this 
time in a very short period of time. However, you weren't moving in the future. You were moving in the same timeline, only faster. My, my fear was, I guess the projection was, how did you know that you weren't going to end up in space or floating once you walked through? Because I put my hand in, I threw objects in, and I was able to put my head through to see if they were still there. To test it, yes. You have to be careful with that. Interesting. Hmm, I guess that's the biggest thing. Yes, I put I my hand in first. I, I put my hand in first to see that it was able to, I wouldn't lose fingers or whatever. What? I what? Put, I put objects in first. That was you know, pretty first. brave of you. Yes, well, can I, you did, I, used, I used other things first before I put my fingers in. I can used you, a, a key, I used a poker from the fire, I used a stick. <laughs> I One used last... many things, and it seemed un touched, so then I yes. used my hand and it was untouched, so I decided to look in, uh, so I threw some things in there, I threw some One things in there that I just looked real fast and they were there, so. One last thing, um, when you, can you describe the colors, was it like a swirl, a haze, what did you see, was it a spiral energy, how did, you know, what did it look it like? Was not a, it was not a spiral energy because of the vibration. The vibration of this, uh, I, I had created it so the vibration was steady and yes. static. It was not moving. I, I mean, there was movement, of course. There's movement in all vibrational energy and dimensions of every kind. Every Everything in this room, everything in space and everything in spirit always moves in some way. So I would recognize the vibrations of movement and that is the one of the keys is the vibration of things and how to get to the vibration because you can tune th right. things to reach a vibration and, and then record it um, and this is where I became astute I became astute and I, I got the vibration of everything around me I and I would and uh, and then I checked tested it and checked it many times to make sure that I could actually touch something and know the know that I was getting the correct vibration because it would resonate in a way that the solid portion of it would change. So it's the oscillation. That? The oscillation. Correct. Because you can with with the vibration that is perfect with your body, you can chain you can put your hand in your body if you would like. Because it changes the vibration of your body, but you have to have the exact vibration of your body to be able to do that. That's amazing so how at that time I, you can record that. Have, yeah. I they are still reading my notes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's okay. The the other the one last thing before I go is did they did they yes. destroy your notebook or did they still have your notebook? They still have the notebook, but they destroyed some of the items because they thought uh, that they were evil. Interesting. They said they they said that they were evil because they what I wrote down that they did they did not believe was part of God's uh, will. Uh, was not part of what God wanted man to be able to do and that it had to be from a negative universe or things of that nature and they were just so fearful of it. It was that is yes. mankind though. Yes, yes. Um, um, one last one last thing. Um, that that energy that you created in in a sense, was it by accident or by design? At first there is always accidents. When you're inventing, there is always accidents, and some of them are good, and some of them could uh, blow you up. But yes, there was some happy accidents. However, I did have some guidance. I am absolutely sure of that. <laughs> I am <laughs> absolutely sure. <laughs> well, thank you because so much. I, there love. was a couple of situations. There was a couple of situations where I could have died for sure. There is no question that my life was at risk when I was doing things and I was so I was actually pompous like Edison at times and I would do things that I know that were not safe but yet they worked out so I was I was that confident but I did have help because there was a couple times when uh, even though I was so confident it, it, mm, it was close 
Nikolai, many scientists yeah. have been trying to recreate your work ever since your passing because they of the, uh, it now. Yeah. the loss of your notes and also because some of your notes were also stolen and taken by various uh, governments from around the world. Um, is there anything you can say to any scientists out there today who are trying to recreate your work and any information about the golden ratio and how this applies to this work? Um, they already have a concept and an understanding of that. What they do not understand is the quark. What they do, well, they do to a point, but they haven't, they're not knowledgeable about all that it has. Um, they're not understanding of its vibrational pattern because it is different. It does not move in the line that that uh, energy moves in, in the electricity moves in. It has its own pattern of movement, which is very significant. Is it's it more quantum? That, is it quantum? It's random. It's chaotic. However, it can be controlled. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have any more questions? All righty then. No more from me at this time. I've said enough. Is there any questions in the room for Nikolai? I do not think so. I do not see puzzlement on anyone's face. <laughs> to, to ask you questions in the depth that you talk about is quite challenging. Um, I'm, I've got 101 friends who would love to have a chat with you about the golden ratio uh, and sure. wireless power that's being brought in today. One quick yeah. question I've got before you go is if, you, if your inventions came to fruition, was there a timeline where your technology positively, positively influenced the world and made a big change 100 years ago? Oh, yes. I, am, I made it possible for the 20th century to have many of its things. I invented the fluorescent light, things of this nature. I, your world has vastly changed from many of the things that I brought forth. And Edison wanted to take credit for much of it. Uh, but I invented AC power, wireless movement of energy, um, and he was saying, oh, puppycock, puppycock. And I was saying, go back and bury your head. So um, we did not get along, but he would not give me any credit for the things that I knew. And this made me a little crazy because he knew far less than I did. Yes, by design. I mean, you can't put a meter on wireless energy. And at the time, it was all about the copper mines, making wires. Oh, generators. The generators that I made are still in use today. They are uh -huh. in every appliance in your home. Did crystal power ever cross your mind in one of your technologies? Ah, oh, very good question. Oh, I like this girl. Um, yes, they gave me some ideas about crystal energy, which I could not visualize. You see, all my inventions came right to my head and were in my head. And the idea of the crystalline energy was even more advanced. Let me explain. They wanted me to move in a certain line of patterns to get to where I was. Crystal energy would have boosted me five times more into the future, and that was not possible at that time because I would have been, I would have killed myself for sure. I would have, because I did not understand the power of the crystal energy and how it could be attached to electricity, which is far beyond your imagination. There's a person. Far. Yes. There's a person that I know that I would love to speak to you about your technology. He goes yes. by the name Theorist. Very good. But yes, crystal the crystal technology entering with the electronic, the vibrational, oh, 
it is unbelievable. And your technology on Earth is reaching that era now. However, it will not be until after first contact that you will be using crystals to, in, a, in that way. Because um, your use of crystals by scientific means is, they still see it as uneventful. Yeah, I had a, one way. last but question about that. Are, yeah, yes. uh, the crystal, the crystal technology be we wonderful. Uh, there's a guy on here, Guru Dan, and he'll probably say something. But yeah, um, the galactic radio and the the broadcasting. I think that would be wonderful for this planet to be able to connect well, to other species through radio. Also, some type of galactic radio. You know, it's all about electromagnetic sent through uh, the uh, crystal grids, and. Um, Different ways to send energy through crystal grids that is just amazing. So there you go. The crystal grids are very, very powerful. And they can be set up even in greater density than they're being used at this time. You would need many, many crystals, of course. However, the power of it would be... You would just have no idea that this is just is this is something that you would definitely benefit from. Yeah, I, I can feel that. I can really feel that inside. That it, it, I know. I think I know. I'm sure our governments are working on that. The, I mean, with they this have invented a a crystal grid with high with uh what you call it chiseled. Crystals. Yes. They have made them into um, faceted crystals with certain densities on each side, which right. can actually make several grids at one time. Um, and this is a breakthrough for them because not many people are using these multi-dimensional crystal grids. Yes, that would be. It would have to be lined in a way we can amplify. Well, and with light and energy and yes. electromagnetic and electricity and yes. vibration and there are so many things, and there is where the quark comes in because yes. it is an element that they are missing from this technology, and it will make an unbelievable difference. That would be amazing broadcast too to see that come in and see it like on a screen from other worlds. Really cool. Yeah, I'm sure also um, Max would love to be here right now and have a talk with you. So uh, I think he's going to be in touch with you very, very soon. <laughs> um, Stephen, do you have a question for Nikolai? Uh, yes, real quick question. Uh, hello, Nikola Tesla. Yes. I was just wondering uh, about the about the free energy devices that I uh, was talking about once first contact and all uh, the peaceful uh, humanitarian projects get underway. About there's a, there's talk about a little black square black box that uses zero point energy, uh, uses uh, universal energy that is created uh, like wireless electricity and stuff that could power the whole house and uh, use uh, completely uh, economical and free energy. Just wondering. I invented that. But you they thought it was it was uh unreasonable. They didn't even believe it, but I proved that it could work. And yes, it was using energy that was wireless. It was using directed energy toward grounded fields. It was it was pulling energy to different parts of things that would be activated. Uh, how, I don't know even how to describe it. It was an activation within an activation. Um, but it was a very advanced. You, we could have it uh, at this time. No problem. It, I invented it back then, so why couldn't you have the little black box now? Of course, they would charge you probably a million dollars for it because you would never have to pay for anything again. So um, no lights, no energy. of Well... If you wanted fire, you would have to co uh, 
give it a co collaboration of some sort, but because fire of a, is a, of an energy that I could not control, or a vibration I could not control. Fire is an interesting, an unusual energy. So um, many things I can talk to you about. I try to control the vibration of fire. You cannot move fire from one place to another. Isn't that interesting? At this point, I'm sure you can. I just did not have the availability of knowledge to do so. That's interesting considering most of our technology is still based around combustion when it comes to travel and transportation. Oh yes, and you cannot, you cannot move something that is constantly in flux like radiation. So fire is like constantly in flux except for the fuel and that is the part that I try to move and if you move the fuel there is no fire that comes with it. Interesting enough. So a lot of our great scientists at the moment are now starting to work with plasmoids and plasma fields uh, yes. within a certain... Uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful thought process. I love the plasma fields. Plasma fields have a lot of energy and uh, but uh, very one thing that is also constantly in flux, plasma is mo uh -huh. moving, uh, moving faster than in inanimate objects, of course. My great thing was if you stay perfectly static, the vibration can be moved, but if, you, if it's in flux or movement, that makes it much more difficult to keep the vibration in control. So that is where I came into problems. I believe a lady yeah. called Judy Babe is um, taking on your work. She's actually said that you've appeared to her uh, in, from spirit. You've actually appeared to her and given her the instructions to make what she calls the golden sphere. And um, we are really looking forward to this technology. So I thank you for putting yourself out there and being able to do this and connect to humanity to help us with our technology. Yes, did she tell you what the golden sphere does? Yes, it's a, it's a form of uh, giving electricity, well, giving power to homes wirelessly. Yes, it's like she the black was, box. Yeah, she said it was very amusing when she put wires to it and she wired it up and she was testing the output of it and then you came to see her after she put the wires on it. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to share what you said? <laughs> well, I told her she didn't need the wires. <laughs> you were that polite? That's what I'll share with you. Pardon me? <laughs> were you that polite when you said that? <laughs> no, I didn't say politely. <laughs> uh, I, but I told her she didn't need the somewhat, uh, some explicit words and, and the wires. But, um, um, and uh, she understood that. Yeah, it's great progress. I, I suggest everybody check out um, Judy Beeb's website, which is um, www.judybebe.com. Um, I, I just let her know she didn't need the wires and a couple other little things, and then that's all. <laughs> oh, the technology is coming, uh, coming along. Yeah. Yes, it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go now. Yeah, right. me. I need to ask you a question, please. Uh, hurry up, dear. Hurry up, dear. Yeah, hello, Nicola. Uh, this is Nova. Yeah. I need to ask you a question. Um, who are the EPs that help you on that at your time? <laughs> I'm not allowed to tell you that. Oh. Okay. They told me that. Okay. I, told, I said to them, after I spoke to them for 10 minutes, I said, You're not from this planet, are you? And they said, They looked at each other and were like, You cannot ever tell anyone that we are not from this planet uh, or where we actually they said for where we are from and I said where are you from and they told me but the, I am not allowed to say be, it will come out eventually it will come out it will come out but they must tell you because I made that promise and I promised that I would keep it and I will always keep it oh. but they and um, but I thought that thank time them. It wasn't I thank them very much at that time, it wasn't what? possible to be taken. At that, 
at that time that information wasn't possible, but now everything is open, you know, everybody knows. Yes, it's people. much more open now, but let them tell you because I made a promise and a promise is a promise. Okay, so, what um, about us? If you want to have your technology and your wisdom, how can we ask them to have, to have some insight? Ah. Mm -hmm. How can we ask, how can you as humans ask him for insight? Yes, if you want to have your ability. If you, I, I tell you, that when you have electronical or scientific abilities, I or one of them may be more apt to appear for you and give you information because if you do not have those knowledges or informations or the beginnings of them or you see I was already very very interested in electricity and was more advanced in my generation than most and that is why they came to me because I they just gave me more of what I already had if you do not have those things they can't give you more of it so um, they they can't enhance that. They can only enhance what you already have. They can't not put things in there and make it as useful. They can put things in there, but you would be sitting there going, well, maybe I'm not even interested in that, you know? Maybe I, I don't want to do that. I don't, it's not something I want to do, so uh, it just sits there. So they knew that my drive was for the electronics and the study of it and the knowledge of it so yes they came to me because my drive was great and I then I became I understand. I, uh, they the just gave me the photographic you can you uh, yeah. yes. uh, the last question is uh, you mentioned about the first contact do you see it coming soon That is an interesting question because where I am in spirit, I cannot, I cannot devol uh, understand uh, time as you are in it right now. So I see it as something in your future, but I really can't tell if it's that far. It doesn't seem that far away. But you see, my purpose is now not to be in time, but to be out of time and in many different densities to share a point of view that only I have to share. Because as you understand, everyone's flame and understanding of things is a little different than anybody else's. And therefore, where I am coming from in the spirit with all the knowledge that I gained, not even the people that gave me some of the knowledge understand what I understand at this point. Because I've moved beyond that. And I don't know where they are. They may understand ten times more than me right now, but I don't know that. I just know that I know a lot more. Thank you Hello, Nikolai Tesla. Beautiful. Thank you, Nikolai. Hello, Nikolai. This is yes. Sarah. Sarah. I have a, I have a question. Um, you mentioned that you, the human body is static and not in flux. You it were talking about fluctuation. It is in the sense. It, it is in the sense that it's like radiations or flames. It's not moving about like this. And radiation is constantly moving out from the, the middle. You understand that? You would have okay. to put a, um, you would have to know exactly the speed in which the radiation is moving out and hold and capture the movement in uh, almost the stasis form as it's moving out, which is, which I could not do. I'm sure some species has figured it out. But, the human body, the heartbeat and things like that still is considered stasis in the sense that it is not moving and jumping about in a great deal of ways. Mm -hmm. The heart does have a vibration, it does move like, and the blood is moving but it's not moving outside of the vibration of the human body. 
because the human body itself has a vibration that is full. Just like anything, that wall has a vibration of its own. Mm -hmm. That chair has a vibration of its own. And you as an individual have your own specific and most precise vibration which can be learned. Now, even with the flow of blood and the synapse of the brain and the heart moving and the lungs moving and this thing, you are still encased in this body which can be static. Now, if you take the body and move the casing with everything in it that is within the vibration of the casing. No, you don't just leave the heart and lungs here. You take the vibration, goes all the way through at that second and causes a stasis in the system that moves the object. Does that make sense? Yes, that's what I was getting at, that uh, we can, in, in the idea of teleportation, Yes, that is the very property of it, is that the stasis, the very fact that you can capture the stasis of the human body in one fraction of a second, even though there are other things moving around in the body, you can stop that for a fraction of a second when the, vi the total vibration meets goes all the way through and that is when you have to that is the when the movement must occur I see thank you very much okay now, thank you very much Nikolai that was amazing thank you so much for coming and spending some time with us today I just wanted thank to you. add mm -hmm. to keep that stasis is very difficult meaning to broaden the second that that stasis happens. That is the hard part. Um, but I was able to, to keep the body static for two seconds. Two seconds is like an eternity for stasis in moving things. So it, it was, I was able to do it for two seconds. So therefore it was successful. Very good. Thank you very much. You are welcome. I just want to say a big thank you and gratitude for being able to talk to you like this because without your inventions, some of this would not be possible right now. So I just want to say a heartwarming thanks and gratitude for everything that you brought to this planet. And you will be remembered in the way you should be remembered. Many people on this planet now understand the work you did and are talked about much, much more. So yes, many, yes it's much, all. Much it is. Uh, thank you very much for acknowledging me. Even though Edison's name is much more well known, they will know my name someday when they attach it to the things of the future. Yeah, we mm. don't like Edison. After what he did to the film, did he try to take it to its own? Oh, he was a jerk. <laughs> yeah, second that. He can say that. He's in spirit. <laughs> he, I'm, I'm sure he now realizes what a jerk he was. But he was a nasty thing. <laughs> I, yes, and to... Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Let's well, do something more. The rivalry between inventors is now. always very hot, so uh, we we leave that one there. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, we'll Nick leave that away. Edison is now in spirit, and I'm sure that he's a wonderful, wonderful light creature. I haven't met him here yet, but I'm sure we'll cross paths, and I'll I'll punch him first. But no, <laughs> I no, I won't. <laughs> No, I won't. I would never do such a thing. So, um, but thank you for listening. I hope that I was a little bit of a bright light today. So, uh, thank you very much, and I love you all. And yes, I even love Edison. I really do. I, I just 
when I think about him in the earthly plane where I am now with you, it is a whole new feeling. So, um, I just, the memories come back. The memories come back. I see the realm as it is. Do you know what I mean? This is much uh -huh. more advanced, but I can see the density. So, yes, but I could also see the future, so it didn't matter. Um, much love to you. Much, much love. love. Much love. By the way, Thank you. I liked Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a hint? Uh, Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'll be there before you guys. Go there and channel him. You'll be the richest lady in the world. You're the board wire. No, I'm just getting out now. Yeah. I'm to Kerr. I'm going to say Welcome. Welcome to Kerr. Yay! Yes. Welcome to Kerr. It's lovely to see you again. I've heard from you this week. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It is good to be here. The energy is very strong here with you. I am happy to be here. It brings me great joy to feel this kind of energy here. This is good. Beautiful. Do you have something um, you want to say to us, Takur? I mean, I have a very important question from someone that's been helping Hugh Kilo, and I want to make sure I get that question read today. But if you have yeah. something you want to say, please carry on. Actually, I've come here to answer your questions because you called. That's perfect. Okay. Well, I have a question from Danny. Danny does a lot of our transcripting. And he does an awful amount of work, awful lot amount of work on for Hucolo behind the scenes. Um, he doesn't yes. take part in webinars, but he has some questions here that he'd like me to ask you. If that's okay. Thank you, Danny. Yes. The questions are: He would like to know about the co the status of the colony movies, about the availability. Ah, there are some old. Continue. Yes, he wants to know the about the, static, of the colony movies on the internet and if someone from us has seen them. Yes. Many of you have run across, well, not many, but a few of you have run across some of them, but we're not sure if they were from the colony or not. But you have run across a few of them, and I cannot tell you where they are because if I do, the government will shut those down. Uh -huh. But you, they not knowing where they are or not knowing that they are real or not have not shut them down, so I am happy about that. What is the next question? Um, he wants to know if it's possible to, if they have the permission to post them on the Internet, but you've just answered that. Obviously, you yes, are. Yes, they do not have permission, but we are not interacting personally, so it is not a violation of their rules. Okay, well, I don't want to get you in any trouble, but um, um, it, it, there is a, a meeting at the end of this month, the second yeah. meeting, he says. Yeah. And is there, if there's, is there possible permission to be given at that meeting to do this? The mission for this meeting is about site-to-site -site transports. We do have a very strong opinion about them, and they have a very strong opinion about these also. That is the only area where we are really actually in a great disagreement right now. So that is to hammer out some of these great difficulties between us, because uh -huh. we feel it is necessary for you to come site to site, and they feel that it is a danger, a threat, and... Uh, a fearful thing for them, whereas they trust us to a point at this time. That is a, a part of their trust system that does not go all the way to that point. However, we have given them medical atten attention. We've actually brought two of their relatives to the ship with their permission to work on their physical bodies. We've given them gifts of small technologies that can be useful to some of them. 
We've given them the assurance that we are not taking over the planet. We've given them the assurance, even from the earthlings that came with us, that we are not harm, harming anyone in any way, shape, or form. But they believed that the humans that were with us were brainwashed, and so that they were not really very successful about giving their opinion, even though they were not brainwashed and were being very truthful. So we're going to have to do something a little more dramatic or drastic the next time. We actually do not appear on the Earth in, in a physical form. We do appear in holographic form. But they uh -huh. can see us. There are delegates they can see, but only in a holographic form. Because we are not permitted to interact with humanity. And that goes for when we are doing our meetings as well. Okay, thank you very much. Just to digress back to the videos, if we wanted to seek, let's say, guidance to find these videos, is there anything we can do to um, help ourselves to guide ourselves or help from our spirit guides to find these videos? I'm trying to think if there is anything that I can do to tell you that would not help them. Yes, yes, maybe in our quiet time when we communicate. This yes, I do not think I want to announce anything on here. No, no, no I would not advise that either. Um, I was thinking more of a personal contact um, that you can give to people to help them find these things. These videos. I see. I understand. There may be a way that I can. You see, everything that Jim does is watched or recorded, especially if it's on Skype or on the phone. So, for him to do that, a Skype or a video with me or someone else and have them give that kind of information it might be picked up. So I'm going to try to think of a way that it won't be. But okay, well if there's some sort of sure telepathy that, that can be done... I'm not happy that I said that either. Yes, if there's some sort of telepathy that can be done in that sort of guidance, I think that would be welcome. Well, you can, can tell them that. if they come to the colony. Yes. And hopefully they can remember. But there are things that I could I could actually tell them at the colony, but not many people are learning. However, good news about that. Some of the we have done a few tweaks and a few modifications, and some of the letter people that have visited recently have remembered more. Now, they are not necessarily on human colony or do hangouts, but they are starting to remember a little bit more and getting a little bit more of a verification that they were there. So we're seeing some improvement in that area because of some of the modifications that we made. Now telling you that we're at risk of them finding those modifications and destroying them, but I just thought for the moment you should be able to, you should know. And we are going to bring some of the people from the old older set up very shortly. That's fabulous. Thank you for sharing that, Tucker. Does so anyone else question? have questions? I do. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Tucker. Hello. How are you? Is that I'm very Caitlin? well. Yes, it's Caitlin. <laughs> ah, um, I recognize your voice. Yes. Um, I have a drawing here that I'm going to share with you. And yes. I would like you to tell me if it is you or it is somebody that you are aware of and I'm very not sure good. if you see it very good hold on a sec let me get this is this you there are some similarities the nose is too big <laughs> I know I kinda felt like it was as well I'm I don't know and also my lips are not quite that human but they do look similar to that my eyes are that good pretty much that large. Make the nose smaller and more cat-like. Okay. There's no ears, It's but it is more rounded. I'm more rounded. But I like the lips. I wish I had them. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, I 
I've been drawing a lot and lately, so... You've got the cheekbones just right, actually. <laughs> it's something I do a lot. I always draw uh, people's cheekbones like that. I do, I do not know what those... Uh, oh, I see. But make the head more rounded. I have no ears. Like that. <laughs> they are all inside the head. We, okay. we evolved beyond the outer ear. Okay, perfect. Thanks. I'm glad I got to show you this. <laughs> Thank you. It's a very no flattering photo, a very flattering picture. Thank you. Thank those you. Lips, no problem. I wish I had those lips. <laughs> My lips are I much think everybody smaller. does. Yeah. My lips are much smaller. Even smaller right. than Jim's. <laughs> well, I, I don't think that's bad at all. I think that's pretty cool and unique. Yeah. But, yes, you made me look more beautiful than I really am. Uh, but I have I my own beauty true. in my world. Yeah. I'm looking I think at you're it from a beautiful. human perspective, exactly. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you thank you. So I, in meditation, I've seen these symbols. Do they mean anything to you? Yes. Um, actually, they're the outline of something, yes. And um, I would have to sit and talk to you about that. Excellent. Because they're they're more involved than what they look. Yes. And they have a lot of energy, and it's the the energy is amplified by the movement of them. If you would, yes. You move them at the same time. Yes. Yes. They're. They're. Converse. Yes. And convex at the same time. Yes. Yes, you understand. I see that I, I don't have to explain them too much. But uh, yes, they're very energetic and very useful right now during this time. Uh, hello, it's Akira. Ah, how do you do this? I will fix it for you. I am fine. Ah, there we go. How are I heard you. Yes, thank you. Yes, um, I had a question about uh, your interaction with the uh, with the uh, canine beings. Um, you mentioned that you didn't like their smell. Well, what do they smell like to you? Well, perhaps they smell like dogs to you. To me, they smell like um, fresh garbage. They do? Yes, like, I do not want to be unkind to them, but garbage is the most harsh I will go. Like but yet, well, um, I do not have to know <laughs> them on the holographic sense. So perhaps so. They um, I believe you will probably find them to smell like wet dog. But you see, that is a scent that they like. In fact, they would probably put something on that smells even worse than that to make them smell nicer to each other. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Uh, do you know if they bathe, the ones that you interacted with? They do go into the water and clean themselves off. It is necessary for them not to have their... Their fur matted when it, where they have fur. Uh, the matting of the fur is a bad sign for them. However, the scent is not a bad sign. But matted fur is a sign of poverty. And they do not have much of that. Um, um, well, what was the name of the race of the canine beings that you named? Love a sigh. Love a sigh. Yes, um, they did not say it before. They did not want me to tell what they were. The love a sigh. They have several different names you can go by, but love a sigh is a, a a kind name for them. It it means um, in the, the one of the words is enhanced. 
Uh, so that's what they call themselves, the Levasai. Yeah, and it means enhanced creature, enhanced being, enhanced animal. It has several meaning in the world, so yes. Oh, and one more. Um, you asked about, you said that that they're uh, sniffing. You you didn't you said that you are sniffing. You didn't quite like it. Did they do it to you a lot? Well, they didn't like how I smelled, so therefore it was unpleasant for me. And I did not like how they smelled, so it was unpleasant for me again. But um, it was unpleasant for them as well because we do not like our scents. However, the thing is, we could tell that they were friendly with one another. It was only a protocol that is necessary for meeting their people and I I did not act like I was unhappy with the scent although it was rather strong but and they acted similarly very kind and um, we, then we did my protocol which is to to uh, reach forth our hands and and unite that way uh, that is a a, a political protocol to show that our energies are peaceful. Yes. If that is if that is good with them, we touch. If not, we can send the energy within one to two inches from their hands. It is still appropriate to share the energy that is positive. Do humans have an offensive smell to some aliens? I've never smelled you. I have not gone up to anyone where you can't smell anyone in the astral projection. So I do not know what you smell like. I, I can give it a guess. Um, there have been only a few occasions when there have been humans there physically, but I have not actually smelled Yeah, I, I believe because of our diets and maybe because it's not always the best, um, we're not always the best smelling race in the galaxy either. Well, you also put on applications of scents as well, yes? Uh-huh, yeah. What world leaders are planning on being there, sir? She asked what world leaders are going to be at the next meeting. There are 23 different countries. Is Putin there? Yes. Is Obama? Russia yeah. is one. How are they going to be appearing? Israel? They will be in person. They will be in the physical. Mm -hmm. And right now in the leadership, for example, Putin is continually cloned or duplicate? No, he is just brainwashed. And he is... I, possessed by their energy. Yes. Is on the fence about many things because aliens really frighten him, but he realizes that they're not all bad. He is actually more of a humanitarian and more of a understanding being than some of the others. However, he's still not pro aliens necessarily. Now we when you say either Putin or Obama, is it always the same energy or it's not cloned, it's not duplicate that we're seeing in television? No, you are are not seeing a clone. That would be obvious to some people with higher energy frequencies. So you are actually seeing the human form in its original form but you are seeing that there's no emotion, you're seeing that there is no and those of enlightenment will know that it's not really his personality. But there is some clone of him out there. Yes, there is. But that clone is not seen on television, I do not think. But it is seen. He, it, yes, there is clones of him, but they are not seen on television because too many would identify it. Now, some identify on TV that it might be a clone because of the lack of emotion and things of that nature. However, his clones are seen by his... What is it called? Cabinet. cabinet. Mm -hmm. He appears as a clone to his cabinet. They are unaware of it. Mm -hmm. And the purpose for that 
so that he can have more instruction and someone else can give them messages. Is he aware of this meeting that he'll be attending? Of course. Mm -hmm. So he's been on board with all this, same with Putin, and their relationship is completely different than with broadcast. Kim has something to say about this. Can you repeat, Kim, please? Kim, do you have something to say about this? I believe Alma Talk may have given you some knowledge as well. I'm sorry, Jim, I didn't hear the question. Uh, to Kerr, sorry, the, the question that was posed to you. Ah, you it was, it? Is, is Putin a cl has clones? Yeah, yes, Putin does, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, you did not, she did not hear the question. And but I was telling her that the clones do not appear in television shows, but or television appearances, but to the parliament, yes. so that he does not have to be there. Yes, and that has a lot to do with frequency as well. Yes. Mhm. Mm yep. Very good. Yes, I thought perhaps that would be verified by you. Yes. Thank you, Tuka. His consciousness has been pushed back. He is aware of it to some extent, but his the part of him that is making decisions is very controlled. Once his decision comes to, sometimes his human side comes to a decision, and before he can speak it, he stops and is reconsidered. You have seen his human side a few times recently. He has actually come to a decision while actually in front of the people. <laughs> and therefore has spoke his actual mind. But it's rare. And he knows if he does any of this, he will be taken out, his family will. He's aware, of, he, has, he knows of the threat. The question is, he, does he know of the threats to him if he actually says what he believes and at this point he believes most of the things that they tell him really? yes no it has come around slowly but it's been a long time coming and so he has lost contact with many of his human emotions or many of his human thoughts and compassions so it is sad Yes. Yes, exactly. Everyone is of the light to start out with. Yes. So is, is there a chance that he will return? Yes, there's always a possibility. But it doesn't look good. It looks good. I cannot say that. I I do not want to put a put a a darkness on him that doesn't belong there. I must go now unless there's any more questions. Ah, you could walk a sheet up ma. It's uh, Tukar. Tia Karofi. Yes. This is Noha. Uh, Noha. How are you doing, Tukar? I am you? well. How are you? Great. I was asking about my uh, my level of uh, spirituality now. It's only last time I was at 3D, even though internally in my heart I feel I'm in 4D. You know? So what do you think? Am I pulled up? <laughs> It is hard for me to understand what you are saying, but you are not always in fourth dimension. But you do need more grounding. Your thoughts get away from you sometimes because you're dealing with your mother and brother and his wives. But yeah. under, because of that, it causes you to want to escape into the fourth dimension. To you, to them, you mean nothing, it seems. But you do have a great meaning to them. They have just do not show it. Do not be undermined by this and get a negative vibe from it. I know they give you that, especially True. the one wife of the the son True. is giving. Correct. Exactly. Do not be overwhelmed by that. Stay grounded. I need you nudge, yeah. please. Nudge me every time you see me pull down to 3D. I'm always, in my heart, I'm on at 4D. I feel that all the time. And I feel the negativity around me, and I'm sending good vibes all the time. 
Well, he wants to maintain control because that is his position in the family. And you are a strong woman. And he sees that you could take control if you would assert yourself in a certain way. But you will not because you are still part of the family and the ways of the family. Okay, my one more question, Iker. Regarding that job uh, opening, what do you think is it coming through or what do you see about it? You're, you're letting, it is not coming through as well as it should because you're letting this, all these other things affect your systems and your attitude. So you must get away from that and find a positive place. For this energy that's coming with the blood moon and the eclipse will be strong. And right now you are struggling to keep in a positive place unless you escape into the fourth dimension. But you must ground right now. You must find that grounding and I will help you with that. Thank you very much. I always feel you sit, you sit it around me. I do feel it. Yes, I, I am I with you. I open the door and sometimes I can visualize at times and see, I can see before sometimes, you know. Even though uh, what Kate has drawn today was beautiful. If you look like that, you're gorgeous. Even though internally you are. <laughs> thank you, Noha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much love. Much love to you and Maintain your balance here and your grounding. Your fourth dimensional energy is very strong, but you live there sometimes because you cannot deal with the, the hurt that comes from the family side. But bring it down, ground it, live in the third dimension right now, and gather this energy that is coming to you in a great way because it will help you with getting the job. It will attract it. it will, right now you are not attracting it. But this energy can attract anything that you put your mind to. Let me be most positive about that. This is a time, I'm not saying that it will happen tomorrow, but the energy that is now coming will not dissipate for a while. And it will be very useful for those of you that are using the power of uh, acceptance and the power that is drawn to you the law of attraction, if you will. Thanks much, Use love. It. I love you so much. Thank you. I love you so much as well. Hello, Tucker. It's yes. Sarah. Sarah. I love you. Let me, I have a message from you, for you. Oh. Yeah. Was. Was. That is all. Thank you. You're welcome. It is them also adding their energy to this great event. Yes. I can feel it. Continue. What is your question? <laughs> I wanted to ask about the... I'm, I'm seeing a lot of UFOs lately. Yes. You have. And, and there... many people have. Your fourth dimensional energy is strong and you can see even the UFOs that are in fourth dimension. Not everyone sees them and not everyone detects them. But you, there are many that are seeing many UFOs because they can. Not because everyone can, but because they can. Ah. Yes, because there is like I saw about eight of them in one place <laughs> at a concert, and I was just wild by that. I didn't know who were it all was. visiting or... <laughs> it was for you. It was for you. You have many oh. people around you that are encouraging you. Oh, that's lovely you to know. Your, your, you will have your own...
I cannot tell you that at this time. That is quite all right. You already know, though, but I cannot speak it. But you already know. Yes. Yes, you already know. <laughs> um, also, I wanted to ask about... Uh, my dreams haven't really been as visionary as they used to be. Do not worry about that. This energy that is coming now will change things. The reason for your lack of dreams was because you were going through a transition period, energy-wise. And during energy transmissions or tra transitions and transmissions, there is a time where the dream state is less. And I'll tell you why. Because REM sleep is not as light. It is deeper. Mm -hmm. So you you will find that, that you will come out of that and your dreaming will become lucid again. Okay. But not quite yet. Give it a little time. This energy has to, to move through you, in you and out of you, absorb into you, become part of who you are. It is a lovely thing. Yes. But I must go soon. The, there are, the time grows short. Yes. Thank you very much. Blessings. Uh, to you. Blessings. Yes. This is Shu. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you, Sheer? I'm wonderful as well. Um, <laughs> and twin there peaks. was a. Uh, hmm? I said Twin Peaks. <laughs> ah, <laughs> it's not time yet, but uh, yes, this is a very good <laughs> memory. Um, my mother said uh, that there's a lot of uh, disturbance in our phone. At home, she hear, hears uh, very peculiar things, and, yeah. and someone said maybe it's extraterrestrial or something uh, have to do with government uh, influence. Do you know anything? Is, anything about yeah, it? It is government. It is a government <laughs> influence because you sent Bougie a message, and mm. since then your phone has been being listened to to see if there is any other messages for him. Hmm, but he doesn't call back. No, he cannot. It is a one way it is a one way tap. I see. Can I send him one a message now? He pr he would probably listen. I would not send it on here because every government will hear it then. Ah. Oh. Okay, but um, in the meeting that you're going to have on the summer this month, is Israel One going moment. to be involved? Think about your message right now, and I will try to get it and send it to him, because Grindel is the one that usually does that. Yes. I do not do that. Grindel okay. usually sends your messages. But I will, I will tell Grindel, and he has a friend that's nearby, Bougie. Yes. Okay, so to focus and you will uh, give him the message? Let me see if he is a close by. I'm afraid he's not, but mm -hmm. I will speak to you later. Okay, I, have I won't take much you, of your time. Ah, for me? Yes. yes. Okay. I will make a private uh, session. We have a lot to discuss. I will let others speak. Thank you. It is not really important, but, we, but I do want to speak sometime. It does not have to be soon, but whenever you feel free. I want to speak with you soon. <laughs> Very good. Then I will. Please give us your blessings before you leave. Yes, I will give you a blessing because of this time there is much energy and I feel much much of it happening with you. It is like I am a, an earthling right now because I'm being affected by your energy. Your energy is coming to me. Do you understand that? And it's reflecting into us. And even though it is not our time for 
this energy, you are giving it to us. And I have much thanks for that. That is a wonderful thing. You are deflecting it to us or reflecting it to us. And so far, I will give you a blessing before I go. Uta karara. Kinia koku roho shundu asa. Sangi ka moho wa hundu si. Tantika kwa muha wa mo we siki shi. Rakara rondu kupo mo kotiza. Sinkwa shumfia vien pwa. Pukukwa katwa ki hiri ingyam vya. We thank you. Thank you. Great spirits for all things. For this connection. For the connection to the universe. For the energy that is now being bestowed on many. For the ascension that is now happening for many. We ask that you would lower the darker energies, even though they are being called to be brought up, we ask that you lower them and bring forth that which is positive and lovely, like the sunrise, breaking through all that which is at a deeper, darker area. Love and understanding, wisdom, integrity be flourished upon the planet. Namaste. Namaste, dear one. Namaste. Thank you. Much love, the girl. Much love. And namaste, I will be leaving now. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Jim. Hey, Hi, how are you doing? Water. Easy. Hello, Jim. Hey, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Very well. Very, very good. Very good. Good session, Jim. Yes. Oh, thank good. you. It was very interesting. interesting. Oh, yes. Oh, mm. yes. Interesting is the uh, capital I word there, for sure. There's something for everyone, oh. I think. <laughs> I think you're going to get a lot, a lot of people asking for a certain individual very soon. <laughs> That's the word goes now. <laughs> Would that be Tesla? <laughs> yeah, <right> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was he very informative? Yes, in many ways, whether it was spoken or whether it was telepathic. Uh, he had a there lot were of some telepathic. ideas. Yes, so if you do want to get in touch with Jim and book a private session, please visit <laughs> www.humancolony.org if you want to speak to Nicholas Tesla, Moses, or any of the other people that Jim can amazingly has his talent to bring through so clearly and so well. Please get in touch. If you've enjoyed the stuff today as well, please also donate because um, we need to stay online. Keep these messages yeah. going. <laughs> and, you know, um, by the help of, God, of all the spirits and all the uh, wonderful positive energy, we will stay online. Um, it's amazing what the spirit does because just I was looking at my situation on Monday going, interesting, I really need a lot of money, and all of a sudden, there it was. So, and just enough. And I thank God for that and thank all the, it's the law of attraction. It works, it works, it works, it works, it works. Once you feel the first inklings of it, 
once you feel that it is working for you, it doesn't stop working. Yeah. It just doesn't stop. You can say thank you and I love you and thank you for all the stuff that's coming and it just still works. It doesn't give up on you. You may give up on it sometimes, but it doesn't give up on you. After you connect with it, it's connected, unless you tell it not to be. So I, I thank the, everyone for that. And it's all your energies as well that are come through. And I know many of you pray for me and pray for us. And we, I pray for you and send an energy out every day. So it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, does anybody want to close with a prayer? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, oh, I'm going to close it out today, Jim. Yeah. We have a congregation of prayers here. Yep. I go a step up since Sabrina's away, so. <laughs> All right. All right, who should go first? How many are there? Tell me. I don't know. If, so I'm, so if ladies first, Sarah wants to go first, I'll finish it up. Yes, and if there's anyone else in the room with Jim who wants to have a prayer? That's fine. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well done, yeah. sir. And if you are going to be a prayer, you have to come over and speak into the microphone. Uh -huh. If anybody wants to pray here, please, because we can't hear you across the room. So. Right. Absorbing. Okay, they said they're absorbing. So how many are there praying? Sarah? Rowley? Sarah. Brian, did you say you were praying? Yeah, I can. Okay, the three of you, so it'll go Sarah, Brian, Rowie? Yes. Okay, just so uh -huh. we're organized. <laughs> yes, we had a wonderful meditation this morning for the uh, eclipse. And uh, I want to continue in that spirit of meditation for Gaia and peace for humanity. Very nice. Haniyakayasa kuyata hatuana sayakahisia taha ushuatana kiana kaisia unia hasakaisia Mene hasi hushu tu hana hahasayata ha kunu kushu tu hana kasia minia ha sayata ha kushu tu hu hanaya ha kaya saya hushu tu huna niya ta ha kushu ha 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 Niya saya kunu shaha. At this time, you are being enhanced by your own vibration. With this event, your self enhancement is great. Be thankful, be prayerful, be meditative. Be thankful, be prayerful, be meditative, and bring forth that in you that is perfect because the perfection is great and the thoughts within you are turning toward the ascension in a way that has not been before be thankful be motivated to meditate in the sense of love and community we thank you for your commitment to love. Thank you. Am I next? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, yes. Um, to the governments of the world and to the people that can hear us, we extend our hearts and our hands to you. We are here to ask of you to join us to bring a great celebration to this planet on working together to bring harmony and balance and peace to this planet finally to bring peace it is time it really is time 
It's a wonderful thing to make it a win-win for everyone, not just for a few. Just imagine we can all benefit from this. Cooperation over competition. Unity, a word that means different things to different people in some ways. But community it is something that you must acquire amongst you. The light that shines between you is some weak and some strong, but it will become a greater thing very soon. And those that are to rise will rise, and those that are to fall are already falling. But you know who you are and how to become closer to the ascension than you already are. And those of you that are bringing light to each other, continue to shed it. Continue to wipe out that which is a shadow. And let not talking about the shadow be the main function, but talking about those things that will lift you and joyful and loving and happy and real. Because love is real and Everything that you talk about is real. And so, therefore, you bring forth reality with your words. Nuka shia konoto ha nekata ho nakaya ta nia kanata ha nakoana. What nika? What is she nekala naona? Kitita na shini wanikina oko nandi ka o ho tia ko ni asia ko na poto haki ni telashi kana tarakano mokata shiana tupopa nakatia na tashi nakatua takata o nara opana shika no you have more eyes upon you today than as many galaxies as we know of. And there are much celebrating with some. And there's much question with others. But right now you are in a great place. A one of equalization. A place where you can balance a place where you can bring things into perspective. Do so at this time. Per perspective is important to your people. That you do not like, lose sight of what it is that you are doing in emotional or fanatical feelings, but of evenness and balance. Make sure that you know where it is that you are heading in a positive direction even if you do not know the outcome make sure it is in a positive direction this is your goal for this time in your lifeline timeline if you will and I will carry on with speaking to you as a group and as an individual Thank you all. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much, Jim. And thank you, everybody well, thank that's you. Uh, turned up today as well. That's been an amazing. Hey, I see all, all kinds of new faces there. Yes, he has <laughs> some new members. Yes, hi. Who's who's new there? I can't even see. There's a bunch of new faces though. Though I see a few, a couple. 
I don't recognize this face. Here. Uh, so I know, we have uh, Edward, Edward and we have an Alex. Oh, Edward, onward, yes. And Alex, hi, Alex, how are you? Alex, very good. Tesla came through. <laughs> I think Alex asked for Tesla, I wasn't sure. Um, hi, Jim. He says, love you, Jim. <laughs> love you. Love you, Jim. Thank you. Oh, that's what I'm reading. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Oh, have a great day, everybody, and I will talk to you later. We have to move forward here. Yes. <laughs> happy Easter for those of you who celebrated, and happy uh, Passover for you who celebrated, and yeah. happy Eclipse and Blood Moon for those who celebrate that. So yeah. we have lots of celebrations right now. So excellent. Mm -hmm. So, much love. Much love. <laughs> My so, much right. love. All right. Thank you very much, guys. We see you Have again a great next day. week. See you Have next week. Have a great day, Jim. Oh, I must have Have a great day, everybody see in the first week room. In May. Okay. The first week in May, I will not have a webinar. I can't have a webinar the first week in May. Okay. So, the Thanks first week in May, uh, I'm off the charts here. So, mm -hmm. Site to site, is it? Site to site. I have an event that's coming up the first week of May that I can't be here in the morning. So. Okay, well, we arrange maybe some cover for you if that's uh, if that's. Yeah, so I thought I'd give you a note ahead of time. Yeah, I, so maybe, Kim, you can do something, or Rowie, or uh, Sabrina, or you guys, or maybe some of you guys. So. Uh-huh. Yeah, plenty of people are stepping up and becoming more of who they are. So I would love to give other people the opportunity to shine sometimes. Okay. So. Excellent. Yes, uh, yeah. Excellent. Kim, I think you're, uh, you're about ready. Your, your fears should be about gone. I think channeling Alma <laughs> talk would be a wonderful thing. So. Totally, totally. He's ready. He's ready to Thanks. come through you in a big way. He's ready to come. He is. <laughs> he's, he's telling me right now. Exactly. He's, here. he's telling me right now. He said, uh, I know. I've he said, the goosebumps. <laughs> I, I, Kim, Kim, I think that you will have a, a big part of that day. Hey, so, Kim, also, Roe is next to you, so you can feel comfortable letting yes. go. Um, oh, and yes. Brian, your time is coming very soon for some that's special why I, That's why I want to see you and Will. I have a lot to talk about to share with both of you. And guess what? We have a lot to talk to you about, too. Okay. Got to wear the Pharaoh outfit. Got to wear the Pharaoh outfit. <laughs> yeah. I might just bring it. <laughs> and I want to thank Will. Yes, Will, too. Thank you so much. Love you, so Will. if you need to get in touch with us, please find us on Google+. Plus. We have plenty of Hangouts going on every day. Um, that's probably the best way. We also have a Facebook group. If you search for Hucolo, H-U-C-U-L-O, you will be able to find us. <laughs> but if you know where we are, you know where the website is, you can find all the links, send us a message, get in touch, send your donations, thousands of pounds are always welcome. So it all helps the good, good for mankind. So thanks for tuning in. We're here hello, and we'll see you again soon. See you All right, I'm going to say goodbye much. to my guests and shut you down. Goodbye. Have, Have a good day, Jim and everybody there. <laughs>